This dog is a criminal. This is her story. Hey there, everybody out in YouTube land. It's W1RCP with a project. So today, we are going to be making some coax cable. This is RG316, and RG316 is really nice until somebody gets a hold of it. I kind of fixed this as best I could. I could have done a better job had I actually used my brain beforehand, but splicing coax cable without putting a connector on it isn't always a great idea. So I need to replace this. This is, this is probably $75, 60 or $70 worth the uh, coax with these ferrite beads on the end of it. So I didn't want to spend another 60 or $70 plus shipping to make some more of these. So what you're going to need is if, if you shop on Amazon, you can get 50 feet of this for about $20. So 50 feet of RG316. And then I did an order from DigiKey. These are ferrite cores and they're about three quarters of an inch long. So I'm gonna go ahead and open these up and let you take a look at them. We are going to open this bag. And I'm only gonna need one. I bought 25 of these. They're about 69 cents a piece. But if you order them in bulk, I think at 25, it, it, brings, it brings it down about a nickel. But my goal is to use seven of these on my each of, I'm gonna make two today. So if you'll follow along, we're gonna make two. I have uh, 25, two 25 foot sections. So I could have made one 50 footer and had a really nice, but I usually for portable ops, 25 feet is usually enough. Oh yeah. You know, that's what you wanna do with your, uh, old bubble wrap and we'll throw that in the garbage now on amazon i purchased the coax and i also purchased the connectors now a bag of 10 of these was 20 dollars, which is not a bad cost for these the one thing about these connectors though is they're solder connectors not crimp so they're crimp on the outside, solder on the inside, but that is gonna be fun. You get to watch me struggle. One of the tools that I have, and I think everybody should have one of these, somebody in your club, but I'm using DX Engineering crimpers, and I'm gonna use the, I think this is a .128 aperture, or hole, or whatever you wanna call it. So that should crimp this, to the, um, I think that's the only part you need to crimp. I would imagine it would be a pretty bad idea to try and crimp the part that goes over the solder cup because if you bend that too much underneath and make contact with the outside of this, you're gonna ground the inside. So I think you only wanna crimp this around where the insulation goes through and then with the shield on the outside goes right there. So your shield is going to want to stop right there. This is going to be interesting. I don't have the measurements for this made yet. And with the ink pen, I want to kind of, there, there were no measure. That's the bad thing. If you buy these from retailers such as Amazon, you don't really get a, a nice data sheet to tell you what, what are you supposed to cut your cable at? So I'm gonna have to figure these out really quick. So what I'm gonna do is draw a line where the solder cup is to where the end of the connector is. And then we need just a smidgen more there's not going to be much of a wire poking out of the front end. So this part is where you're going to strip all the way down to the conductor. 
this section right here should be insulation. Then you also, when we look at this, you've got your conductor, you've got your insulation, but then you also want up to this point, from there to there, that is where you're gonna want the shield, the braid of your RG316 to go. So this section right here is your shield braid. So you have a few cuts to make and we're gonna have to use a couple combination of, or a combination of tools here. I've got my Klein wire strippers, which should be fine for stripping the inner conductor, the center conductor. But to take some of the insulation off, I'm also going to use a hobby knife. So we'll see how that goes. All righty. So we have seven of these that we need to put on there. And I wanna be careful because I don't want them to hit the ground. And there's an order that we wanna put these in. So with that, we're also going to use some heat shrink. This is three eighths of an inch heat shrink and it's supposed to shrink three to one. So three to one is what this is supposed to shrink down. So I'm gonna put these in a row like this. See, I, I don't have any measurements. We're doing this whole project together. So there are four, five, six, there's seven of these. And I want a pretty good amount of insulation on each side. So I say we go about an inch to each side. Now I have been known with using this with a non-QRP radio and the NFED or the random wire, I've been known to smoke some of this heat shrink. So now we've got the heat shrink for the cores. I'm also going to use some of this heat shrink to go up and over this portion right here, just like that. So there's an order that you wanna put these things onto your coax. So the first thing that you want to do is put your heat shrink on. So go ahead and put the large heat shrink because that's the last thing that you're going to, to do. Now I've got this resting on the desk. I hope it doesn't slide off. The next thing you need to do is get all seven of these uh, ferrite cores carefully. There's a piece of garbage floating around that was stuck to me. Carefully get them seated next. So that is going to be that part. Now, there's another piece of heat shrink. That's the piece that's gonna go over that, the connector, the crimp portion. And the last thing you wanna do is put that on before you start working on this. Now, we're gonna use this first piece as a test to see we need to strip all of the insulation down to this point, but we do not want to remove the shield. So take a pen, maybe we can make a small mark to know where we need to go right there. Let's see if the largest aperture in these clines is enough to preserve. It's not, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna pull our, our braid right off. Should just, yeah, see, that's all it is right there. Just one thin piece of insulation. Now this part is what we want to take care of next. And that's where my DX Engineering coax strippers come, or cutters come in handy is because we only, see, I didn't buy the green. 
we want this to be about that far back because you don't want it to extend beyond that portion right there. So we have already measured that out. Watching where that insulation is, that's about where we want to trim it. So our little tornado, we need to go ahead and trim these little guys right there. Now that we've done that, the last thing is we need to strip just that much off of the tip of this particular wire. Only that much. That's where these wire strippers ought to do their job. We only want that much to stick out. Okay, so we've got our measurements. Now we're gonna find out is this actually going to work? So we're gonna peel that back and then hope that we did the right thing. I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the soldering iron. Here we go. It does fit through there. Oh, and it does push up in there quite nicely. Wow. That is beautiful. But now my blind tail cannot see what to solder. But guess what? I have a new helping hands. So the way that I'm going to clip this, and then maybe the next time I get it set up, it'll actually be ready for the other four connectors that we have to do, is I'm going to clamp that right on top of that. That should hold all of that still. Keep that. Now I hope that you'll be able to see this. I've learned that with this camera here, the GoPro, things tend to get in the way. Now making coax connectors, even if you do have to solder them, isn't that big of a deal. It's just, it's a lot of tools and a little bit time consuming. It takes a little bit of forethought. But what we want to do, make sure that tip is very clean because if we make a solder bridge inside of there, it's over. There's, there's no going back. And it blends in so nicely, but we only want to touch the wire and the solder pin itself. And it's so hard to tell, I don't even think that that's soldered. I think all the solder stuck to the tip of my soldering iron. They really don't give you a lot of room to work in here. My hands aren't shaking at all. That's the camera. Now that does look pretty good right there. That is what we were looking for. A nice connection. Okay. So then we're going to take our braid. Push it up and over like this. Make sure that none of it extends past that point. Now we're gonna bring up the last portion, and that is this cup should slide up and over. It, ooh, it snaps into place. That's nice. And then we're gonna use our .128 aperture to crimp 
this portion down. So we'll let you see it on camera. We're gonna crimp just like that. And it should have turned out nice and square. And it did. Hi right, George, we just made us one end. So there is another section. I think I'm gonna go ahead and crimp it one more time right there, just for extra measure. Let's see if we can match those up. Well, I did a pretty good job. I was pretty close. Okay, so now we have the end made the desk. Now we're gonna do this two more times. So I made these measurements, we're gonna use these measurements. We're making, gosh, we should've went over the cost analysis of making this yourself. If you were to buy these particular cables from a particular company, and I'm not knocking what they do, the amount of money that I have invested in tools, if I had sold the tools, I probably would have this coax for a long time. But again, I help other people make coax got the tools, it's worth it. And if you already have the tools or somebody in your club already has the tools, then you could make this at home. I mean, you don't want to go use some auto ignition crimpers. It just, it's not going to be pretty. I've done that. It works. It's just not pretty and neither is it durable. So if you've got the tools, great. Um, if you don't have the tools, then I can understand that doing this project might not be cost effective. So I'm not knocking the company for what they make. I'm just a maker. I like to make stuff. And in the process, I already have the tools. The tools are already paid for. And so I do see a, a realized benefit of savings. That is not always the DIY way is to save money. It's to do it yourself and to learn a new skill. Um, you know, I used to subscribe to Make Magazine a long time ago. And if you couldn't take it apart, uh, one, of the, one of the things was, if I can't take it apart, I don't own it. And in today's digital rights management and all that stuff with the copyright of code and vehicles and everything that we own just about and how you can't crack it open and make it your own without being sued. You know, Sony back in the day with their track bar, I think it was with the Xbox 360, I think it was. All right, there's another one. You remember that folks, if you're into the hobbyist kind of thing, folks were hacking them to do things that they wanted them to do. And Sony was issuing cease and desist. Now, if I'm recalling this information incorrectly, you could fact check me in the comments. I do not mind. I can take some constructive criticism. But if you can't open it and make something out of it for yourself, then you don't really own it, do you? I like to void a warranty every once in a while. Okay, so let's slide that over. We have stripped a pretty good amount of insulation back, a pretty good amount of the braid back, and now Guys, forgot to remind me. We forgot to put two things on there. Come on. See, this is why you want to do this before is because that frayed braid is going to try to keep you from pushing this up in there. If you have the coax with the insulation still on, this isn't an issue. So maybe I'll remember to do this on the next go around. Okay, so that's on there. We really dirtied that up. Now we need to strip this wire remember you're just taking a little bit so let's go down to the next smallest tooth and only strip what we need there we go 
And then you take and you push that up in through here. Let's go ahead and take this insulation and pull it back. If this camera is not showing much, I'm really sorry. All right, pushing that up in there, we're gonna put the center contact into the solder cup. We're gonna use our helping hand. Gosh, having a helping hand is so much better than just having junk floating around on the desk. Sure makes this job so much easier. Okay, so we've made that connection. And now this is why you want to put on your stuff because there was no going back. That was the other end of that particular piece of coax. So we're gonna slide this up and over. It snaps into place as that coax, uh, the braid gets snatched up in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and crimp that right there. That one's in place. Okay. <laughs> How am I gonna show this on video? So, I'm Yeah, perfect. And put that all right, now this next part is going to be a multi-section heat shrinkage. So we're going to first heat shrink this, shrink, 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 shrink. That's perfect. Let's be L-informed on the top stuff, but I may have to put the camera back down. Okay, this is made. I think we do rest on the table. We use the helping hands. So I'm going to take them. Maybe I can face the screen while I go to that one. So this morning I'm going to go inside it. It wasn't working anymore. I'm going to find out that was why I don't use it. I'm going to supply it up for it. It was not happy. Okay, now for the last part. Now I'm going to bring this up. If you look at this original one, there's a pretty good gap between the end. It's about eight or nine inches where the heat shrink is. And these are smaller. I think it's also multiplied, so it's a different So we're going to go to your nine inches, which is use a fingertip, fingertip. And that is the end we're going to put in the helping hands. Just slide that over there. Now we're slide these guys. We're going to knock off now. Slide those up in. And we're going to push these into the heat shrink. You may want to take this point. There is no going back. So let's try to get even. I think it's on the center. Push it in there. Try to get it as even as possible. There's about an inch on that side. Maybe an inch and a quarter on that side. Let's push it back this way. Okay, that should be even. Now the helping hands. We're going to put the other end of this coax. And let the heat shrinking begin. This is the part where I said, holy moly, it's four o'clock, y'all. Alexa, stop. Now we're going to let the heat shrinking begin. Now, I see that my discount heat shrink, I, I use this discount heat shrink for these larger four I put on there. Look at these. And it's not quite stitching up to my coax. It should have 3.1 to 3.8, and that's pretty close to an eight inch. You can't touch the company's all their boys are hot. Can you feel that heat? Okay. I have considered taking these and pinching that end ever so slightly. Since that glue melted, that should ensure that that doesn't go anywhere. Looks like candy.